All right, let's dive in. Today we're looking at BYD and they are really making a name for themselves in the EV world. No, oh, yeah, they are. I've got reports here from CLSA, Morgan Stanley, and get this, the China International Capital Corporation, CICC. Wow. They give us uh, a really fascinating look at what BYD has been doing and where they might be headed. It's always good to get a variety of perspectives, you know, some financial analysis, the market trends, even a little peek into their strategies. It's all in here. So let's start with um, their performance in the third quarter of 2024. Okay. All three of these reports, they uh, highlight that BYD actually beat profit expectations. That's impressive, especially with how competitive the electric vehicle market is these days. It really is, especially with all the price wars happening right now in the Chinese EV market. Oh yeah, they've been lowering prices right alongside their competitors. Exactly. Yeah. And Morgan Stanley's report actually dives into BYD's revenue growth. Okay. Overall, it surged by 24% year over year. Wow. And 14% quarter over quarter. That's significant. But there's a catch. Their average selling price, ASP, has been declining for seven quarters straight. So they're really focused on capturing that mass market, offering more affordable models, even if it means a slightly lower profit margin per vehicle. It's a volume game at this point. It seems that way. So how are they beating these profit expectations while they're also lowering prices? That's a good question. Well, CLSA suggests that uh, BYD's vertical integration model is a key factor. Ah, that makes sense. They make their own batteries. Yeah, unlike a lot of other automakers, BYD manufactures their own batteries, which could give them a huge cost advantage, especially in a price war. Absolutely. By controlling more of that supply chain, they have more flexibility. They can potentially undercut competitors who are relying on those external suppliers. Now let's talk about gross profit margin, GPM. This is essentially the profit BYD makes on each car after they subtract the cost of building it. Right. And all three sources point to a jump of 3.2 percentage points quarter over quarter. Whoa, that is a big jump. That's really significant. Morgan Stanley and CICC both attribute this impressive GPM improvement to a strategic shift in BYD's product mix. They're selling a higher proportion of their DMI 5.0 models, which are known to be more profitable. So they're not just competing on price, they're focusing on models that bring in higher profits. Exactly. Smart move on their part. Now, CLSA also brings up an interesting point. CATL, which is a major battery supplier and a peer of BYD. Okay. They also beat margin expectations. That's interesting. Could this be a sign of broader improvement in battery costs across the industry? It's possible. If battery costs are going down, it would benefit all the EV manufacturers, including BYD, give them more leeway to adjust their pricing. Yep. However, Morgan Stanley raises a counterpoint. Uh oh. They observe that BYD's operating expenses are going up. Makes sense. They're expanding, innovating. It's going to cost something. And a big chunk of that increase is due to their research and development expenses, which jumped 52% quarter over quarter. 52%? Well, they're not messing around. What's driving that kind of increase? Well, Morgan Stanley suggests it's probably due to uh, BYD's plans to launch new models okay. and develop new cutting edge technologies, Weird. which, you know, the EV landscape is constantly changing. So. Yeah, you gotta stay ahead. Gotta stay ahead of the competition. Continuous innovation for sure. So it sounds like BYD is really playing the long game here, yeah. investing heavily to secure their future in this EV market. Definitely seems that way. But let's shift gears a bit and talk about their global aspirations. Okay. Both CLSA and Morgan Stanley uh, highlight BYD's overseas expansion and their push into the high-end market as really crucial for their future growth. Absolutely. These are two key areas uh, where BYD really needs to be making some strategic moves if they want to maintain this uh, impressive growth trajectory. Morgan Stanley even suggests that they need to recalibrate their strategy. Recalibrate, huh? Yeah. What do you think they mean by that? I think it suggests that BYD needs to be fine-tuning their approach for different markets, you yeah, know? Yeah. For instance, CICC's report highlights some of the challenges that BYD is facing in Europe. The EU has launched an anti-subsidy investigation, and they even imposed tariffs on their EVs, which could really hinder their expansion plans. Yeah, that's a real obstacle they have to overcome. Yeah. But CICC also notes that BYD is responding proactively. You know, they're constructing production facilities overseas. Oh, okay. Which would help them bypass those tariffs. And they're also exploring the potential for their plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, PHEVs. In the European market. In the European market. That's smart, diversifying the product offerings. 
PHEVs might be a better fit for that market, at least initially, with their existing infrastructure and, you know, consumer preferences. For sure. So they're adapting, you know, they're learning and adjusting to different market conditions, which I think is, uh, it, it's a good sign. But let's talk about the financial side of things. You know, we've discussed these aggressive investments in R&D, global expansion, but can they sustain this level of spending? What about their cash flow? That's a great question. Morgan Stanley does point out that their operating cash flow dipped a bit in the first nine months of 2024. Okay. However, they attribute this mainly to those investments that we've been talking about. So it's not necessarily a sign of financial weakness. It's more like a strategic allocation of resources. Exactly. It's important to look at the bigger picture. And CICC highlights a crucial point. BYD has actually been managing their capital expenditure pretty carefully it decreased year over year in the first nine months of 2024. So they're being responsible. Exactly. Even as they pursue these ambitious growth initiatives, that's reassuring. And if we recall, CICC also emphasized that BYD has significantly strengthened their cash reserves. That's right. This gives them a lot more financial flexibility to navigate these changes in the EV market. So we've covered a lot of ground here. You know, BYD's strong performance, ambitious goals, the challenges they face, but what does all of this mean for the listener? Why should they care about BYD's journey? It's a really fascinating story, and it's really relevant, I think, for anyone who's interested in business, technology, or even, you know, the future of transportation. They are a prime example of a company that really knows how to adapt. You know, they yeah. started as a battery company mm -hmm. and transitioned successfully into automotive. Wow. Eventually dominated the Chinese EV market. Now they want to be a global leader. And they're not afraid to take risks, try new things. Their commitment to innovation, it's remarkable. Constantly pushing boundaries in battery technology, electric powertrains, even autonomous driving. And let's not forget sustainability. They're not just building cars, they're contributing to a cleaner future. Yeah, and their vertical integration model, like where they control so much of their supply chain, that's, uh, that's fascinating. It's a strategic edge in a world with all these supply chain disruptions. Absolutely. So BYD is reshaping the automotive industry right in front of our eyes, and their journey is, uh, it's a reminder that even with intense competition and global uncertainty, bold decisions, you know, clear vision can lead to extraordinary success. Yeah, and it leaves us with a question, a thought-provoking one. As BYD continues to expand globally, you know, pushing the boundaries of technology, will they become the undisputed leader in this EV revolution? Or will new challengers come and disrupt their dominance? That is the billion dollar question. Yeah. One thing is for sure, BYD's story, it's far from over. It'll be very interesting to see what the future holds. Mm -hmm. You know, this whole deep dive has got me thinking about BYD's vertical integration. It's given them these big advantages like cost control and production efficiency. For sure. But could there be a downside to that? Mm -hmm. Could vertical integration actually hold them back in the long run? That's a really interesting point. You know, while vertical integration does offer control and stability, it can also make a company less adaptable to change. BYD might not be as nimble as some of their competitors who can just switch suppliers or, you know, partner up with other companies when the market shifts. It's like a trade-off, right? The security and efficiency of doing everything in-house versus being agile and flexible by working with others. Exactly. And in a fast paced industry like electric vehicles, you know, where technology and consumer preferences are always changing, that agility can be crucial. So BYD is basically betting big on their ability to kind of control their own destiny from battery production to assembly to global expansion. That's a high stakes gamble for sure. It's very different from what some other EV companies are doing, you know, embracing partnerships, sharing resources, trying to navigate this complex global market together. It's fascinating to see these different approaches play out. On one hand, you have BYD, this powerhouse doing their own thing. On the other, you have these companies joining forces, creating this whole ecosystem of innovation. And who knows which model will be more successful, right? right. Right. The market lets different approaches compete and evolve. There's no one right answer. Hmm. The fun part is watching these companies navigate this whole electric vehicle world. It's exciting and unpredictable. And BYD, they're definitely shaking things up, pushing the whole industry forward, making everyone innovate and adapt faster. For sure, whether they become the global leader in EV or hit some unexpected bumps along the way, they've already had a huge impact. So for our listeners, BYD is this company with a unique mix of strengths and weaknesses. They've got the money, the innovation, the drive to compete globally. But they've also got those challenges like competition, geopolitical stuff, and maybe even limitations from their vertical integration model. 
The future is wide open. That's what makes this so interesting. It's been an electrifying look into BYD, their achievements, their goals, and the challenges ahead. Their success really depends on whether they can take their success in China and make it global. As you keep learning about EVs, keep an eye on BYD. Watch their innovations, partnerships, wins and losses. It's a glimpse into this whole EV revolution, a thrilling ride that's changing the future of how we get around. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We'll be back soon with another fascinating look at a company making waves in the business world.